Hi, my name is Dylan Blaylock, and I'm the Communications Director of the Government Accountability Project, or GAP, a whistleblower protection organization based in Washington, D.C. This video is intended to provide a snapshot of questionable conduct performed by senior level managers at the D.C. Fire and Emergency Management Services Department, or D.C. Fire Department. GAP is concerned with the actions of Fire Chief Dennis Rubin, as well as other senior level managers. Presently, GAP represents two different women who were fired from the fire department after raising concerns to senior management. They are Vanessa Coleman, a former captain of the fire department, and Teresa Cusick, former general counsel of the fire department. Before we begin, I'd like to note that in the interest of fairness and transparency, GAP will make available the longer excerpts of all the clips that you'll see. First, we're going to see a clip from the deposition of Fire Chief Dennis Rubin discussing his interactions with former firefighter Chris Sullivan at a D.C. City Council meeting. In his sworn testimony, Chief Rubens claimed that he was threatened by Sullivan at a D.C. Council hearing after Sullivan testified. GAP Senior Counsel Richard Condit, who is off camera, is the attorney questioning Rubin. The comments that Sullivan made had nothing to do with his testimony. If you'll watch the end of the tape when Sullivan approaches me and offers to kick my ass and do a few other things, I'm going to stand on that. Let's stop it right there. It's true that Firefighter Sullivan did become angry at Chief Rubin, but to get a full picture, we need to know two things. One, why was Sullivan angry? And two, how did he act? Let's watch a video of the action in question, courtesy of the D.C. Council website, which archives these meetings. But I've gone through hell and back. My last paycheck was $49. And uh, I wonder if Assistant Fire Chief Lee and Rubin and uh, Lee Schultz See that right there? That's who you affected, right there. Did you tell my little boy? Would you be man enough to tell my little boy what you did to me? Mr. Sullivan. You're laughing. That's not funny. Viewers can infer from Firefighter Sullivan's statements in that video that Chief Rubin and other fire officers were snickering and laughing when Sullivan brought out a picture of his child to underscore the effect that retaliation had taken on him. And Sullivan became angry, which is understandable. But how angry did he become? Let's take a look at what Chief Rubin says about it in this clip. And I, I was in a position where my life was being threatened by this gentleman. And then all throughout the building as he trailed to me, uh, trailed behind me to the elevator. And that's the part that he was brought up in charges for, along with a dozen other items. You might notice at the end of this clip that the lawyers on Chief Rubin's side were saying, stop. Well, earlier in his testimony, as we've shown, Chief Rubin states that Sullivan threatened him with bodily harm and that the tape of the city council meeting should be checked. So we checked the tape and found that it really doesn't support Chief Rubin's testimony. Furthermore, Rubin just mentioned how Sullivan was brought up on charges. And that's true. Sullivan was brought up on charges at the request of the fire department for those actions. But it shouldn't matter what the fire department thinks. It should matter what the police department thinks. So let's look into that. The police detective who was brought into the case to look into Sullivan and the charges against him quickly dismissed the case. Why? They couldn't find any evidence of any wrongdoing. Gap obtained a copy of the transcript from Sullivan's hearings at the Fire Trial Board, the internal court where firefighters are tried for alleged violations of rules or standards. Detective Eliza Brown testified about the investigation of Sullivan's alleged threats. Detective Brown, who has been a detective for 10 years and a police officer for 19, stated under oath. So I sat down and reviewed the videotape from the council hearing, looked at it from the beginning all the way through. I didn't find any criminal wrongdoing. I even had my lieutenant look at it and he didn't find any criminal wrongdoing. There is nothing here that indicates that this gentleman, you know, is causing any threats. Later on, the detective wonders why, if what Reuben says is accurate, why the security at the scene of the D.C. City Council didn't intervene. I said, if this took place, this alleged incident took place right there on the council grounds, I said, there was law enforcement personnel right there. I said, why didn't they intervene, or why didn't they make an arrest? So at no point does Detective Brown, a 19-year veteran of the force, find any wrongdoing by Sullivan. Now, Chief Rubin did end up retaliating further against Firefighter Sullivan just for this episode, which prompted a letter from Councilmember Phil Mendelson to ask why exactly Rubin was retaliating against Sullivan. Here's how Rubin responded to the letter that Phil Mendelson sent to him. Have you responded to um, this letter from uh, Councilmember Mendelson? 
can answer that. No. Well, are you planning to respond to the letter? No. I think for the council member to have even sent this letter was disrespectful on the council member's part. Now let's turn to Teresa Cusick, a GAP client and formerly the general counsel of the fire department. All the clips that you're watching today were taken in regards to her uh, case. Teresa, thanks for being here. Thank you. So, in a nutshell, tell me, what did you blow the whistle on? Well, I found out that Assistant Fire Chief Brian Lee, who works directly with Chief Rubin, was covering up for one of the arson investigators who was accused of cheating at an examination at the Fire Training Academy. And in fact, the Office of Inspector General was investigating his conduct. But despite this, Brian Lee appointed him to do internal affairs with the department. And how long had you been at the department to this point? That was exactly nine years. And how long were how long was Dennis Rubin in his position as chief until he moved here? Oh, uh, a little bit less than three months. Okay. In a minute, we'll watch depositions from Rubin about why he transferred you. But before that, let me ask you something. Um, fire departments tend to be thought of as being male dominated. Um, how many female officers are around in higher positions at the department? I only know of one female chief officer at the chief officer level in fire and EMS. In addition, there's some professional civilian women as I was. That's it. Okay. Well, let's look at this clip of Chief Rubin describing his encounter with you. And when you say that Ms. Cusick was providing a hostile work environment for you, what are you uh, referring to? I, I've never had the opportunity to be belittled, demoralized, uh, and, and spoken to as she did that day in her office. And the other side of it is obviously the, the gender difference as well. And um, Not that it wouldn't have been horrifying for a man to have uh, distressed me and to have, have told me about the, the habits of the other employees or the, the, the alleged habits, but this was a woman barking at me as well. I was just, I was overwhelmed. A woman barking at me. What do you make of that? I definitely never barked at him, but him saying that makes me think he has a little bit of a problem with women. I see. Well, let's look at our final clip. Ruben's version of what happened in your office between him and you in the days before he transferred you. I need to warn our viewers that this next clip contains coarse and vulgar language. Did Ms. Cusick say why she was uh, upset? You know, she described that um, the bastards were against her from the start, that this is years of, of uh, uh, a bad relationship, but, but bad working conditions, I guess, for her, and that they had treated her horribly, that they were playing a game with her. I'm, I'm, I, I wasn't sure of the background, but it evolved around the fact that the three people um, she had a pretty big disconnect with and a lot of contempt for. Did you uh, seek to investigate any of the concerns that she had about the individuals that she was mentioning? Well, you know, I don't know how you'd investigate whether they were or not, so I don't know how to do that. I guess I could have asked them if they or not, but she described them as motherfuckers, I can go on. When I've, never, I've never experienced that. I've been in this business for more than 40 years, and I've never had a subordinate talk to me in those terms about another subordinate. Um, and especially an attorney. I, I, I was, to say that I was flat-footed or, or, or overwhelmed and knew at that moment that Teresa was the one that wasn't going to fit in and where I was headed, that was convincing. It, it, it was the most compelling evidence that I could possibly garner or put forth with anybody. So I, I never checked out whether they were <laughs> and mother or not. Teresa, did you ever say such things? No, I never did, and people who know me know I don't talk like that. And even if I were to use profanity, it would be nothing so graphic. I was frankly shocked to hear those words coming out of the fire chief's mouth. So why do you think he did it? An act of desperation, maybe? Mm -hmm. He couldn't think of a legitimate reason mm -hmm. for moving me. Right. So he came up with this, but frankly, I feel like it uh, demeans his uniform and the fine men and women who work for him. So this was just fabrication and everything against you was just retaliation? Definitely. Okay. 
Thanks for that, Teresa. And thanks to you for watching our video. In a few moments, the links to the longer excerpts of the deposition video should be popping up, as well as a link to an episode of Whistle Where You Work, GAP's television program, which focused on this specific episode of accountability issues at the D.C. Fire Department. You can learn more about Teresa Cusick's and Vanessa Coleman's case there. For any information involving this video, please contact the Government Accountability Project at www.whistleblower.org. Thanks.